afternoon to everyone and welcome to the event organized by Arctic Invent to discuss about best practices in protecting AI inventions. So Arctic Invent is a full service IP consultancy firm based at Noida, having permanent offices in more than six countries. As of now, we have worked with over 600 startups worldwide covering tech domains and have successfully worked on over 1,000, 10,000 IP projects. So myself, I am Vikash Lohia, General Manager and IP Strategist at Arctic Invent. I have around 15 years of experience in patents and I look after drafting and prosecution. So I have with me Dr. Joni, who is also a patent professional. We'll be discussing about best practices in correcting air inventions. So over to you, Joni. Thank you, Vikash, for giving introduction. As you already said, we are here to discuss best practices for protecting AI invention. Right. So, first question which comes in mind is why? Let's start with why. Why protecting an AI invention needs some special attention as compared to standard algorithm? Can you please elaborate? Yeah, so your question is like why protecting an AI invention uh, needs some special attention, right? Right. So see, unlike some standard computer programs or algorithms, right. which are predictable, right? And can right. mostly be described exactly. So an artificial intelligence or ML solution is open-ended in nature, right? And it changes with different training data and different model settings. Right. Thus, there are certain unique considerations associated with protecting AI innovations. As for example, the description of the invention, right, in a patent application, which basically describes AI and ML solutions, must provide sufficient guidance so that the amount of experimentation, right, required is not undue. Thank you, Vikash. Uh, you are putting focus on amount of experimentation required. Correct. For, for AI based patent application, how to make sure that amount of experimentation required is not undue? Okay, so first of all, let's us clear on what is the meaning of undue, right? Okay. So the dictionary meaning, I mean the Oxford dictionary meaning is unwarranted or inappropriate because of excessive, which means any excessive experimentation which is required, right? For example, you have written about AI inventions, but still a person who is already skilled in the art is not able to make and use your invention, right? You're not right. giving sufficient information. So right. in that case, if a lot of experimentation is required, that is called undue experimentation, right? And I think long ago there was a case law, which is called Vance. So in Vance, the court provided eight factors, basically for determining whether experimentation is undue. So out of those eight factors, let's focus on three of them, which are very relevant to the artificial intelligence and machine learning inventions. And those three of them are the patent specification, right? Whatever you describe regarding your AI inventions. Okay. So should have working examples. The second is the quantity of experimentation necessary, right? So even if you have provided some details, right? Machine learning, and you probably gave some examples, but still it requires a lot of experimentation and people are not able to make out what the invention is all about, then the experimentation is called undue. And the third is the amount of direction provided by inventor, right? You should provide some amount of direction, like where, what, should people do, right? And what was actually invented? What kind of models were used? What was the trading data that was used? So some kind of information, if you provide then, you know, people can really try to make or use the invention, right? That is a part of your uh, written requirement uh, needs, right? So 112 uh, as, as USPTO. So I hope your this answers your question, Johnny. Yes, Vikas, thank you. So, can you please uh, 
also provide some insights like uh, based on these how to meet written description requirements for ai based invention for solid ai patents okay so your question is uh, now how can you provide some insights right i mean right, right. how to meet the written description requirements right right for ai ai inventions okay so generally speaking a specification is enabled if it fills in gaps in the art so that any ordinary person or any layman person could make and use the invention as i said earlier also right so more precisely a claim can be enabled because the invention can be made and used right but it is still still fail right the written description test because a feature of the claim was not adequately set out in the specification so okay. let me give one example so in 2019 uh, us patent office issued some guidelines mostly like 101 and software related inventions right so those guidelines also provide insights to the written description and enablement requirements so taking cues from those guidelines and some publications like follow up publications from many like you know attorneys some best practices could be talked out so let me start you i will give just you know uh, brief pointers to the best practices so the best practice the first best practice for ai invention is the problem right the problem to which the machine learning is applied should be very specific that is the first one the second best practice is with the model structure used so you should specify in your patent specification what kind of model structure are you using okay. the third is the training algorithm right i mean the model structures can be many right but what kind of training algorithm you are using so that should be and what is being applied to the model structure should also be clearly laid out in the patent application and the fourth best practice is training data right so definitely a model is trained by using some training data right so the training data some information about training data should be available and the hyper parameters the hyper parameters that guide application of the training data and lastly how these structures are integrated with hardware right so okay. these are all the best practices one should follow while describing the ai based inventions does this answer your question yes because uh, thank you thank you for uh, describing different best practices uh, can you please uh, elaborate more about on the first best practices that is the problem to which machine learning is applied please elaborate this okay so you want to uh, me to elaborate on the first best practice like right? the problem yes. right? okay okay yes so see in the patent application for ai inventions the problem to be solved right should should be set out with some specificity it should not be like anything under the sun right it's a very specific what you are going to solve it is related to heart rate so you know detection is going to solve you know some kind of image uh, you know object detection or something so the problem to be solved should be very clear because it may prescribe the model and the training algorithm right for instance uh, the problem may be of a type for which label training data is available right so in this case if label training data is available a model which is capable of supervised learning which may be appropriate right and if label training data is not available then probably unsupervised algorithm or uh a reinforcement learning technique may be necessary and sometimes you know the input data is complex right and you collect the data from different sources for example an excel file a text document an image and a video in such case a model which is capable of simplifying the input for example a convolutional neural network might be needed right which can then come up with one unique format right which is usable so all these questions and all these confirmations need to be taken from the inventors and smartly you should design your questions to the inventor and client you know to design a very good patent application so does it answer your question johnny 
Yes, Vikas. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, it will be more help helpful if you elaborate the second best practice also, like uh, the motor structure being used. How to approach uh, this? How to approach a motor structure? See, generally, a patent drafter should have a very good background of technologies uh, and right. models, right? Uh, and discuss the same with the inventor, which is very important while discussing the inventions, right? So inventors sometimes, you know, are very busy in their day-to-day -day work because they are, so the IP is not primary to them, right? IP is secondary to them. So they are very busy in their development work to develop products. And sometimes they don't have much time to explain everything, the models and details. So a patent drafter, you know, a person who is handling the patent should be very smart and ask smart questions. So that's the first point. The second is, in AI and ML, different types of models are available, right? For example, a naive base classifier, an artificial linear network, a markup decision process, an SBM, which is nothing but a support vector machine. So you can simply confirm from the inventor that, hey, are you using a base classifier? Are you using an SBM? And then you can, you can design your application accordingly, right? So it right. also helps to prevent that undue experimentation requirement, right? Then meet that uh, written discipline comment. And then, and sometimes, you know, one model is not suitable for every type of problem, right? So sometimes, you know, more than two, three models can be also suitable, right? In such a case, uh, the best practices provide at least a range of candidates, right? You can provide some range that, hey, I can use, so this is applicable to this, 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 and this type of model. For example, a base classifier, an AI, and then a mark of decision a process. So all these information, pieces of information, right? What is the starting material? The starting material is the trading data, the model. So that helps a lot, you know, uh, to give some kind of structure to the patent application that, hey, now the experimentation required is not undue. People can now make use of it, right? Which model to use, what kind of training data to use, and so and, uh, things like that. So I think uh, your, I hope I answered your question, John. Yes, because and thank you very much. So we, we discussed about motor structure, training algorithm. So what will be the next step? Like if we have, once the type of motor structure and training algorithms are identified, the next consideration for AI invention is like type of training data, what type of training data, can you please elaborate this point also? Correct. So exactly. I mean, this is the next point uh, that, you know, after you have specified what kind of, you know, model is used for training algorithm. So the type of training data is also very important. So the first is the quantity of training data, right? So with regards to quantity, a little data can lead to problems of underfitting or overfitting. So in AI, these terms are very well known that the, the data, little data can lead to the problem of underfitting and overfitting. On the other hand, having too much data, right? Like billions of images or something. So there might be a constraint of memory and processing resources. So because memory and processing resources are not unlimited. So we may need to set some example or certain upper bound, right? On the amount of data that is reasonable to be used for a training model. So for example, you can specify like 10,000 images were used or give a range, 10,000 to 20,000 images were used to train the training model in an example, right? In another example, some other thing were used. So whatever have been used, don't give the exact data, but give a range that this range of data was used. So that will help to, you know, uh, give some hint and avoid the undue experimentation. The second point is uh, the source of training data. So, you know, sometimes publicly available training data can be used, right? So then you can provide you know, some link or, you know, the reference to what was being used. Or sometimes inventor has some special source of data, right? Then this should be confirmed with the inventor. Now, the other thing is if sometimes you don't have any source and, and because your idea is just at the conceptual stage, right? And 
sometimes inventor just planning to do things that uh, hey we have plan to do this this way then the best practice is to get the characteristics of the suitable source right so you just can say that we use training data right you should specify that images were used for example images of plants were captured at different you know uh, situations or conditions and all these things right so this is very helpful to provide some kind of context that hey what kind of uh, you know what type of training data was used and lastly check whether pre processing of training data is required so sometimes you know some algorithms require that the data be pre processed to be useful right and there sometimes incompatibility with the data and the models so you know with some new attorneys and you know uh, new people joining in uh, we have also observed that whatever is algorithms are available in the internet people simply copy it and you know just write it in the patent application right and then they list out that everything they find in the internet which is not a good practice then right you should have some background of which training algorithm goes with which data for example there is a uh, algorithm called random forest algorithm right so this algorithm is incapable of operating on data which have null values so if the client has it you know if your you know inventor has some data which has null values and you are saying that i am using random forest algorithm then it is not compatible right is not going to sync and sync with the uh the data right so which is not a best practice definitely you should avoid such kind of uh, you know pitfalls and accordingly in the data it may need to be filtered so you may probably specify that in such case where data has null values you know some kind of filtration will be required and then probably you can use uh uh random forest algorithm and lastly one should also consider whether the model is trained once for example you are also using a pre trained model for the invention or you know the model is permitted to adjust itself in flight which means the model can you know you know learn itself in response to new data and new conditions right so if the model is retrained during use then it is very important you know to specify that where this data come from in real time and how this data will look like so this becomes a very important piece of information to put in the patent application so while asking you know when discussing with the inventors you should be ready with this kind of questions and you should have some background you know of the algorithms and the compatibility with the data so this goes a really a long way you know to really draft a you know valuable patent for your client for your inventor you know because india is a now called a land of startups right so we need to really create value for each startup and try to you know draft patents and try to uh, every every you know supportive like patent professionals will draft a patent which is really helpful for the economy to protect the inventions right so i think to sum up these are all the best practices i think if one could consider and keep in mind this will go a long way to you know handle ai inventions so i hope yeah i hope you i answer your question john yeah yes vikas and thank you very much i agree with the, all the points you recently described yeah uh, at last i just have one last question with you like if you have to list at least one point or you can say one in most important point for ai invention what will be that can you so please you, you, you just want one point right one important point. right right see see all points discuss are important right i mean you cannot uh, just leave out uh, any any other point because all these points go sink and sink uh, to you know make it uh, a worthy worthy of patent right but yes if you asked about the most important one i'll simply give one suggestion that you know you know your the inventor may say that i am using machine learning to do this this and this like three functions right uh, or probably to solve a problem so don't just write you know machine learning i am using machine learning to solve the problem and examples of machine learning is this and this no so 
if the machine learning so this is unlikely to meet the written description of requirement right if a claim were to rely only on the machine learning for novelty so instead it's always better you know the best practice is to provide the starting points so by starting points i mean as i said you know uh, what kind of model structure was used what kind of training data was used right what was the quantity of training data now it was like images or a video or a text document the model was a base classifier right so all these starting points are very important the second is conditions right to sum up the conditions right so is it work does it work like have you provided a pre trained model does it change in flight right or is there in an environment conditions or any other data which is you know interacting uh, with the ai model and the processes right and lastly the processes so so the starting points the conditions and the processes so the processor means what it does right the functionality right so sometimes your ai model will do say 10 things right it can do such classification it can do something else right so and sometimes you require two three models to two different things for example the first model can be just be used to you know synchronize all the different inputs into one one format right one unique format and then you apply a second model to do something so all these processes should be clearly laid out in the specification and you should claim smartly right you should not just uh, you know claim to the pin point i mean if you have invented something which is dealing with how you you know improve on the collection part focus on that if you have improved something on the architecture part of the ai you know if the architecture itself is new focus on that but mostly it it is functions right what it does then you may specify different categories of claims right one of the claims might just talk about the functions right what it does even if not mentioning that is done by machine learning and then you can another set of claim you know we can say that hey this uses machine learning and in us you can have a lot of continuation application to exhaust things right so you can make use of all these strategies you know to extract the best possible for you know value out of the invention i hope you uh, i i answer your question uh, johnny thank you vikas uh, thank you very much uh, for uh, giving answer to my all question uh, i have no more question uh, you, we can check Thanks, out yeah. if there are some comment yeah so i think uh, i got some uh, questions from audience so okay. probably yeah i'll i'll, I'll take this question so uh, just give me a second let me check the question so yeah so the question is uh, it looks like so uh, the question is it looks like it is important to have uh, questions ready for inventors that are very specific for ai inventions uh, and can you give some examples right so yeah so absolutely i mean you should you should be ready with all the questions right uh, and it's very important to be ready because inventors have much time uh, they have very limited time to interact so with the limited time you have uh, so it is very important to ask very specific questions and you ask for some examples so the examples might be does the ai invention relate to data collection data pre processing training inference or underlying ai architecture right so ask very specific questions another question might be what technical challenges did you face that led to the ai invention right and then ask what how did you address them right so the third question may be like uh, did you encounter any unexpected problems during development and it is very important to note note all those problems right because uh, that that may help to improve the value of the patent what were the conventional or existing approaches right uh, you can also ask from the inventor he might have a lot of you know knowledge about it what was improved right and then as a to write a very specific or you know patent eligible patent uh, you know uh, patent so you can ask like is the functioning of a computer another technology or technical field is improved by you know uh, your invention how were the improvements realized what kind of data is used as input to the system 
what kind of data is used for the training of the system what is the structure of the layers of the architecture so there are many right what activation function are used right in ai uh, activation function is also very important role right so all these questions if until you ask them right the inventor will not tell, may not tell you he may he may not right uh, sometimes an inventor who has like you know experience of dealing with patents a lot right maybe he has dealt with like 20 30 patents then he knows what to do what not to do but initially you might have to handhold the inventor you know really ask a lot of questions thank you so much uh, to be at least 30 minutes and have a good day thank you because thank you thank Bye. you everyone but